you're welcome to a brand new episode of the Oma Living Show. On today's episode, I'll be talking health, right? I'm not talking entrepreneurship today. I'll be talking health. Growing up, we were told that health is wealth. But right now, I don't see much people even taking into consideration their health. Most people do not even give a damn about their health. Now I ask you, do you want to argue? How many times have you gone to the hospital just to check your basics, your, your, your BMI? Do you even know your BMI? Have you checked your blood sugar level? Have you ever gone to check your high blood pressure? How many times have you, just like you maintain your cars, just like you go to paint your nails, just like you do all of those other things, subscribe your DSTV and all that. Have you ever for any day, whether you're ill or not, gone into the hospital to check yourself? These are the problems. So we'll be talking about our health sector, the doctors, and the future. Health is wealth. I grew up hearing that, but that seems not to be the case today. My name is Marilyn Oma Anona. I'll be with you right after the break. Great opportunities are presented to us every day, but sometimes we miss them, living a life of regret and what-ifs. Opportunities come but once, or maybe not. Now, introducing Tatcoin. Tatcoin is Africa's utility token that gives you access to a life of endless possibilities. You can shop, buy real estate, travel, invest, and build wealth. For more information, visit www.abitsnetwork.com. topic like I told you earlier our health sector our doctors by doctors I mean medical doctors and our future very sensitive and with me on, to, on today's episode as a guest is Dr. Emmanuel Isien he is a medical doctor six years practice and he owns his own hospital well he's going to share with us the struggles the health sector all that, that needs to be done, or at least some of the things that need to be done, as we cannot possibly, you know, finish up everything in one episode. But before we delve into all of that, please meet my special guest. Nice to meet you, Oma. Okay, you look very good, you look very healthy, you're a doctor, so you look healthy. Okay. The minute you walk in through that door, I will see health, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Welcome on the show. Please do my viewers the honor of, you know, getting to know you. Who are you? Okay, it's nice to be on this show. Um, I thank you once more time. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Essien, and for those popular on Instagram, like you saw me, yes, the hashtag Dr. EEE and all that. I'm trained from, uh, I'm a trained medical doctor in Ukraine. Uh, I graduated 2015. Wow. And I returned back to my country to serve my country. Mm. And I'm always going to be proud to say that. Oh, wow. And How patriotic. Yeah. And you know, it's not easy to decide to come back to your own country no, it isn't. where you face racism and all that. Mm. You, uh, what we call, not racism per se, you face uh, issues with uh, people thinking that you are coming out from abroad, you cannot do well. Yes, here. environmental and factors. Yeah. But out there too, you also face what I call racism, which is mm. what I was trying to explain, where the whites don't still give you the opportunity in certain sectors. So it's like you're facing it here and you're yeah. facing it home again. Yeah, so you're facing it in two places, so you have to be ready. Does that mean, are you trying to say that once you have a foreign certificate, you're not given as much you you know, not, uh, opportunity it, down home? It depends on the countries. If okay. you are in the United Kingdom and you're practicing there, you will not be restricted to certain things. Oh. If you are in Eastern Europe, you're going to be restricted to certain things. Oh. If you're in America, your license has limits too. Oh. So these are things people don't really talk about. Talk about. But if you're in Nigeria, where it's your home mm. and it's an African country, like I came back in 2015, I had to write my medical license in advance for Nigeria. Mm. And when I was done, I was told to go work in a hospital, either teaching or general hospital here. Okay. So I had to facilitate for a year. Mm. And even before I got it to was compulsory. Yeah, it is compulsory. It's compulsory for everybody to go through that oh, training. Yeah. So if you don't pass your licensing exam, despite you've gotten your foreign degree mm. here, you can't do anything here. Oh, great. So I see. I think get, that's a good thing, though. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people get Regulation. frustrated. Yeah. They get frustrated when they come back. And they can't match up with what's going on in Nigeria here mm. with the exam protocols and all mm. that. So you have to go back. 
while some if you make it you just have to do the internship thing mm-hmm. and then after the internship you further to the nyc okay so i did all those protocols i did my nyc here so you nigeria. have great love for nigeria yeah because i think it's a future it's a big mm-hmm. future and everybody has to key into it but it's mm-hmm. not it's not easy because everybody thinks uh, uh, you sound quite different because there is a trend yeah i'm not blaming the doctors okay right every one of them seem to want to leave this place what do you think is responsible apart from the fact that yes we all know they are not well paid yeah. our doctors are not well paid apart from the pay what else would you think is a reason why they want to rush out there are several reasons we can list almost a hundred okay so number one is uh i'll use something simple a doctor is supposed to walk into a pharmacy here and you show your id card and you're supposed to be given some drugs free of charge yeah if the doctor is sick mm. they don't really have such conditions for instance a doctor also should not be stopped like i had a case of a doctor in lagos that's why maybe it's a fault too but the police stop you and then they see your id card they don't respect that mm. so the respect is not basically very wide for every doctor in nigeria more like they're not recognized yeah, yeah. we don't see them as all that yeah and, and in reality doctors are supposed to be all that doctors are supposed to be given the opportunity and then you see in the case of covid 19 or coronavirus uh the government is supposed to pay us way better because it's about losing lives. Mm-hmm. Most doctors it's a are pandemic. Yeah, it's a pandemic, and doctors are the ones that are in the forefront. Well, you're the soldiers now. And if you die, nobody pays the compensation for that. Your family is just gone. So we take a lot into our head. We are like the people that are emotional, you know, casket. We have to talk to our patients, calm them down, the give them hope. Yeah. But we know that if something happens to us, we are gone. So this is what I see as a major factor. First thing, we need to value our doctors, they don't value them. And when you don't value something, you lose it. So exactly. that's what happens. So before exactly. you even talk about the pain. And you don't even get the, the best of what you don't value. You don't even get the best mm-hmm. of. And then the next thing is specialties. The, the country doesn't have this uh, segmentation of uh, hospitals to specialties proper. Let's say you're looking for a gynecologist or an obstetrician or a gastroenterologist or oncologist. You need those places. Like one building. Just what set you, aside yeah, for oncology. So yeah. when you're done with your practice, you go there pediatrician or cardi- uh, cardiologist. cardiologist you just have everywhere section i was in a country where they call it the eastern european zone but each state has 21 hospitals mm. that means this is for children this is for adults this is for mental issue so if you look at nigeria as a whole 36 states how many hospitals do we have in each state that is run by government properly mm. and that has space and numbers of workers mm. so another thing doctors don't have space to work or practice their profession where like your specialty i'm a cardiologist i want to be where i see everything cardi- not just yeah. any hospital not just any hospital even in the covid situation you don't move patients to zones that are general hospitals you move them to specialized centers, yeah, for respiratory issues for intensive care proper centers so you don't mix cases. so you see it's a lot like you said yeah so it's, it's a, a lot, lot. That, uh, it's, being... it's a lot and that brings me to the next question now away from doctors and how they are obviously maltreated yeah the health sector in nigeria it seems very bleak and not bright at all. What do you think should be done? I know it, right now we can't even say individual. There's a limit to which, for example, you own a hospital now, yeah. but there is a limit to what you, you can, can do. do. Yeah. What is your advice? If the president was sitting right in front of you, listening to you, what would you advise him to do? The first thing the president should do, he should do what is called maintenance control. It's what is called maintenance culture, which the whites actually do. Of course, we have put a lot of money in budget into the health sector. But is it being used? But does he have a tax force that goes in to check every hospital to see what goes on? Whether it's being private or government, if you want to run it well and change your country, because the basic thing I will tell him is change Nigeria to a tourist center for medical health care. Everything medical, just like India is doing. Why? Because we have professors here with PhDs. A lot of phd everywhere then what are we doing with them nothing there are no research centers just properly. decoration okay so for instance why would we wait for another country to produce our vaccines why would we wait for another country to check which strain of uh, coronavirus is stopping it's very tough here, but yeah. we have a lot of microbiologists we have a lot of Bio scientists chemists, all they are not making use of them so if you want to turn the country to a proper zone for tourism healthcare must be considered you don't just do for parties for celebrities remember the health sector not yeah, just not doctors, just it that. goes far Medical away. Lab, all yeah. that. So for me, like I, I own my own, but I own it indirectly. Why? Because I created a system which I think government should do the same thing. 
where you give room for investors to come into these hospitals. So what do I mean? National hospital, for instance, cardio section. The government cannot pump in so much money. Oh, Chedola, please, can you take care of the cardio section for us? Oh, uh, Mo, Madam Mo, can you take care of the pediat mm. uh, pediatric section for us? Mm. With that, you have people that have shareholders in this sector and there's no they will way. have their interest, interest and they will ensure that everything yeah, is everything moving is all well. well so instead of just saying oh private sector have your own private hospital government will run it now create a room where in these sectors subsectors there are private people investing in private so it's almost the same thing i did indirectly like i just looked at the woman she was struggling she owns two hospitals but i see oh and she couldn't even pay me i was like the doctor working there my colleagues were working there fully supporting her but when i was done she was like dog do you, are you interested i said well you know i'm a young guy I can only just still own your name, but mm -hmm. I can own a franchise from you. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, support you capital wise, mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. more. That is what we need. And that's mm -hmm. why I said there's no point of my colleagues running. So that it won't be like there's a there's a there's a, a um, slang or slogan, um, government property is nobody's property. Yeah, it's nobody's property. So when she told me that, I just said, Okay, ma, you're private, but I can do it. But I developed an idea also that if I can do this in the private, I don't mind walking up to the government. I said, see, give me your hospitals. I can manage it, I can create the system. Where you okay, it's quite justice. interesting talking to you. You seem to have everything figured out. He's very bright doctor. I'm impressed, super <laughs> impressed. But I wish there, there a lot of other doctors know the things that you know. I mean, I talk to most of them and they, all they just want to hear is I'm relocating to the United Kingdom or to the United States. Is there a forum, a community? I know that your job is very tasking. Yeah, that tends to bring young doctors to many of them are lost. I don't know if you talk to most of them. Most of them are actually very depressed. Yeah. They seem to, why did I take all these things? Yeah. And these are very bright people. Is there any forum for you people to discuss this type of issues? I'm talking of the young doctors now, yeah. millennial doctors. Yeah. The young doctors actually, uh, they're faced with a lot of things, like I told you. Um, when you see your seniors that, you know, did go further before you, and they advise you, no, just forget about it, just face your academics, just do this. You know, things will get better. Because like me, when you get to be a consultant, you earn uh, as much as close to a million naira in one to 700. But they don't tell you. A million naira in one to 700. After how many yeah, years of practice? That's, that's, that's like not even money. That's $777 at the For a month. 360. So, uh, you know, it's uh, something that, you know, it's passion. And we're told that we have mm, to save lives. And, work. and you don't have to look at the money. countries, the treasury, if they have the money for us or not. But they have abused it because from the budget itself, from the NMA to every sector, I don't think the money has really gone far. And that's why even the NMA is upset with the government. Uh, the Medical and Dental Council, they may not do so much just to approve us that we should mm. practice. But we need a body to fight for us, True. aside us talking. True. So we have other platforms that are struggling. We have doctors come together from the diaspora. But what and if the body never talks? The body are uh, being threatened by a lot of things. Just like you had a lady who talked about chloroquine in America mm -hmm. and you had after a while a shock attack. Mm -hmm. So you have your limits. Except you're a public health doctor, which I expect my colleagues to fight for it. Mm -hmm. Those ones who further to do public health, mm -hmm. they can fight for it. We have platforms on Instagram that actually discuss these things. Like I said, Doctor Health mm -hmm. platform, mm -hmm. doctoral platform. Some blogs are trying. Mm -hmm. And uh, the this doctor's business is another mm -hmm. platform too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they ask you for your past history, what you face, and you talk about it. But it's not just about talking about it. Like I told people, you need to be proactive. It's not easy. You have to take the bulls by your own by self. Your own. Someone, has to, your own. Someone has to do it, but mm. it's not easy. So I used to tell them, you have two things in your hand. This is your country, this is another land. Which one do you have more power? Another person's country or your country? This country will take you. They make use of you. And after a while, you are done. True. For instance, True. ask them, how many Nigerian doctors could be in America really own hospitals True. in abroad? True. True. You don't. You're True. still going to work for them. Of course, True. they'll pay you work. So it's left for us to fight for our country yeah. to be better. And then you have the issue of those ones who left with those experience from abroad coming back home to I seek to for fit government in. to ask them, let's do the same thing we saw there. We are being pushed aside by either politics or some bureaucracy. So, so it's, <laughs> it's I'm almost getting depressed listening to you. But yeah. that's not the aim of this episode, though. Yeah. I know we're trying to solve the problem. Yes, yeah. yes. So what's the future? What future do you see? The future I see, and uh, I would say the COVID-19 came with blessing and a cost. Because now it's made the government to realize that we are not ready. I first made a statement for a federal capital territory not to have up to 20 hospitals owned by government. Let's say 10 teaching hospitals, 10 general hospitals. We are not ready. For Lagos as the biggest city in Nigeria and the fifth largest in Africa, in Africa, not to have up to 10 teaching hospitals and 10 general hospitals or more 
with your doctors and pediatricians or specialties. We are not ready. So it's now really we also horrible. see it affects even the numbers of the cases that checking mm -hmm. for COVID. Mm -hmm. Fifty five thousand is what we can check in a population of two hundred million. America is what four hundred million, and they have checked close to six million cases. Remember, so what's the <laughs> what's the disparity there? And then we are easily see healthcare like after all we we'll get well. Nothing serious as we exactly. have. Exactly, that's so, where the value value system comes yeah, in. Yeah, People yeah. don't place value on health they in don't Nigeria. Place value so much on it. And when you look at it, yeah, this one just dropped down there and died. This one died here. And, you know, so we're more of a, let me use the word, more politics, religion, then medical come later. That's the two things that control the country. Entertainment. Yeah, then entertainment. Entertainment is, is number one. Number one. So you see, even on social media, like uh, earlier said something. Like something I posted on my social media last week. Yeah. I said, value. I was ranting about doctors. Someone even said, are you sure you're not a doctor? This one you just, yeah. you know. But I was just... I'm, I I love to fight for causes, you know, that kind of thing. And then I said something. Number one, our value system is wrong and flawed. You see a young person who complains of being broke. Let me take ladies, yeah. for example. But she would save money to buy hair yeah, of right. 500,000, 100,000. She would go to a makeup studio, sit down, and make up for 15,000 naira, right? But when she's ill, she will resort to self-medication. Yeah. It starts from these little things. Talk, Until we get it right, a lot of things will get, not... You talk of self-medication. On my platform on Facebook, I tried to create awareness because, like I told you... And why? then I heard something ridiculous from a doctor that has practiced for three years. Yeah. She said, someone would call for home coins, or I don't know what people call it, yeah, home, home, service, home service. And then, pricing a medical doctor, yeah, 5,000 yeah, naira. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't believe how... It's going on. It's something very common. And that's why I... 5,000 naira, home service for medical... You don't even tell a makeup artist in Abuja that. But, but it's, it's crazy. And then uh, companies are really trying now in terms of that aspect to help us to get to reach our patient. So you have mobile apps coming up. It's going to change in terms of that aspect. Mobile I pray apps, it does. price doctors like Uber. I pray it it's does. not going to happen. So before a doctor comes to you, you get to pay them before service. I pray so it does. Happen. So the future is... The future here is the tech is going to help us a lot. Okay. And uh, that example of this is here where you see in the coronavirus era, uh, a lot of doctors have not gone to the podium to even argue with the presidential tax force. They allow our elder statesmen to do it in the medical mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. but on their own side, they are trying to change things. So now you hear that a lot of things government is acquiring or setting up, doctors are involved. Mm -hmm. Do not so loud. So like I'll try to tell you something about self-medication. Someone got to me and said, Doc, I want you to talk on your platform about this chloroquine thing, self-medication. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Now our people are also ignorant. Mm -hmm. Now they want to trust. They have made it so bad that the value for their own doctors Mm. It's down here. Yes. So if I talk and I didn't talk on CNN, mm. a Nigerian is preferably going to listen to someone on CNN of course. than listen to someone on it's channels a TV or on Instagram. And, and then trust again. Yeah, so I yeah. started doing that and observed that. So it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably have another session with you, another episode with yeah. you, because we can't possibly exhaust Solve this all the problem one day. One. Yes. So it was nice having you on nice the show. To see you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll be with you right after the break. That was a very, very intense one with Dr. Emmanuel Essien. The health sector is in shambles. I don't want to be modest. And I think we should start to do something about it. If not, our country, Nigeria, will be in a big mess. We're in a mess already, and it will get worse if we do not do something about our health sector. This topic cannot possibly be exhausted in one episode. I'll definitely have to call Dr. Emmanuel some other time so we do more and more and more. Our doctors need to be treated better. Our health sector needs to be rehabilitated all round. And now I'm not just talking about the doctors, I'm talking about the lab scientists, the bi microbiologists, the biochemists, and everyone in the health sector. And then what is the future? We have to work on our health sector. It's been a great one with you on this episode. Until I come back next time, my name is Marilyn Oma Anona. Stay inspired. I love you.